welcome. Hey, welcome. <laughs> yeah, Academy of Tone number 98 together with Fabian Ratzak from Düsseldorf. Yes. Hey there, guys. Hey, he drove all the way down from Düsseldorf with the German Bundesbahn. <laughs> yes, thanks for traveling with the German uh, Bahn. <laughs> yeah. What was the delay today? Oh, the delay was about uh, one and a half hours. Okay, it's a bit more than my um, DD2. <laughs> <office>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This makes uh, maybe 800 milliseconds, so one and a half hours, that's pretty, pretty <laughs> decent. <laughs> Yeah, um, Fabian has been on the Academy of Tone twice already? Yes, twice. We had uh, done the Ingvi Malmsteen, Eric Johnson one, uh -huh. and we done the John Mayer one in September okay. last so, year. For those guys who haven't seen you before, check out the other episodes first. And um, as you can see, Fabian is an expert on um, guitar heroes. I love um, guitar heroes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so he kind of chops all the chops and um, understands the DNA. And um, that's something we want to look into Joe Bonamassa, who is another yes. guitar hero. Yes, absolutely. And um, it's interesting. Um, we came along with the idea because Joe Bonamassa will be playing in Saarbrücken, which is where we are right now. I think in April? April, right? yes, yes. Like, something yeah. like 22 or 24. I don't know exactly, but I think yeah. it's in that time range. And the, the venues get bigger and bigger every time he comes, and the price for tickets... Yeah. I was about to say, yes, the price is getting higher and higher. Yeah. Um, well, there's a thing I want to be a bit critical today. Sure. Um, because I remember, Joe, from back in the days when he pl um, played all the, the clubs that I play with my bands for like 17 euros. Um, and I actually met... Joe, um, I think it was two years ago in LA. Oh, okay. And um, I met him a few years before that already, but this was a very brief thing with Trevor Wilkinson on some, you know, trade show. But um, the thing when we met like two years ago was at the LA Gun Club. Um, the Gun we, Club? Yeah, actually, <laughs> oh, yeah. this is how, how they call themselves. Ah, okay, okay. And it's... Um, It's, um, I think, on a Tuesday or whatever day, some in some kind of pizzeria in Los Angeles in the valley. That's where all the guys meet. Yeah, and I was there um, invited uh, by Carl Fahain. Mm. Oh, excellent. Um, since I spent a day with him and he said, you know, well, come on Tuesday or whatever day it was. Um, there's a bunch of guitar players hanging out um, and I met the female singer of the, of the German band Spliff, mm. um, for those older guys like myself, um, they had a, a beautiful record um, called The Radio Show. Spliff was the band of Nina Hagen. Ah, great, yes. And um, the, the singer um, that was singing on that uh, radio show album just found out that some German was there and she was very proud to tell me about, yeah, she played with a German band. And I said, well, what was what it, Spliff? And I could sing, sweetest radio. <laughs> yeah. And she, she went, <clears throat> fuck, he knows all the tunes, you know. Why Saki College for the Totally Dump and all that um, great stuff from that record. So we, we kind of um, talked for a while about when she was in, in Germany touring and then um, I was uh, with Carl, and then suddenly there was Joe coming in, oh, okay. and then Joe, of course, he had a new Les Paul. Of course, Paul. he had a new Les Paul. Les Paul. <laughs> so he was very proud, you know. He he came in and had had to show it to everybody. This is a 1960 Les Paul, uh, formerly owned by blah blah blah, and of course it was like uh, six figure numbers or whatever. Jesus Christ, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And we all looked at this guitar and, um, yeah, of course. Um, and we talked a little bit. I, I, I talked with him about um, his early days in Germany when, when he played the Schwarzer Adler ah, yes, yes. in Rheinberg. And he said, oh, the, the Black Eagle. And in Germany there are several Black Eagles, you know, because this is a very f um, common name for, like, small clubs mm. where, where you can drink your beer and have something Black Eagle 
Schwarzer Adler ist always... Schwarzer Adler. <laughs> yeah. It's something. Ja, um, yeah, and he's a real nice guy. Um, and... Um, ja, yeah, so then of course there were other people and uh, I I talked to I talked to him for like 10 minutes or something mm -hmm. like that and uh, that seems a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, kind of relaxed and um, of course if you're buying your guitar then you're going to be relaxed. <laughs> yeah, and of course he was so proud of <laughs> sure, sure. another birth or whatever <clears throat> it was, um, you know. Um, for me the question uh, ah talking about expensive guitars um, next week I'll have an episode where I interviewed Rudolf Schenker of the oh, Scorpions okay. on the number one YouTube channel which is called World of Vintage Guitars is it Friday or when is it okay it is this Friday yes. um, and uh, well Rudolf also has some money in the bank sure I guess so <laughs> <laughs> and, and a few guitars in his um, arsenal, mainly Flying V's. I, I was about to say, yes, Flying, he's an expert in that field, I think. Yeah, and, and he, it happened by accident, he told me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you, you had to, he had to stop, uh, start somewhere. I mean, it, it, he played different strats and Les Pauls and, and one day, um, he got offered um, a flying V and uh, brought that home and <laughs> back in the days this was before the Scorpions were uh, a very successful band mm. he was a clever and smart guy he already had um, the PA system that he could rent um, to festivals mm. so he was the guy who supported the tech you know the, the PA gear and stuff and the scorpions. So the reason for him being there in place first was he was the guy that had, you know, PA systems and monitors and, and, and microphones. And then of course there was his band, the scorpions, we play also, you know, um, <laughs> opening act or not so important yeah. kind of thing. So he sneaked into the business from kind of the back door. Oh, nice. And here's, here's the story about uh, uh, Michael Schenker um, and Rudolf Schenker and the Flying V. So, Michael, uh, this is what Rudolf to told me, um, bought this Flying V and then they had this gig and at, when, when the, uh, Michael, Michael's girlfriend um, had to whatever visit the parents and, and something and he forgot his guitar at his girlfriend's place. Okay. So, he came to Rudolf and said, I have no guitar. And then he said, what's this? Well, this is a flying V. And then Michael played that flying V with a 50-watt Marshall Plexi back in the days. And fell in love. And this was instant mm. love. And it was that magic tone. Rudolf told me, it's like, this was the moment. Oh, that's great. Everybody was if shocked. You find your guitar, that's... Yeah. And what happened was Michael played that V and Rudolf had to play some leftover echo <laughs> straight into the BA yeah. because the 50 watt Marshall was already taken by his brother, which I heard didn't give it back to him. But this is, you know, brothers always fight and... Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And so um, Rudolf owns one of those very... Uh, f well, he has a huge collection of flying Vs and one of them is a 58... I th I don't know, was it 350,000 or 650,000? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Too much money. Way too much but, money. But still a great guitar. Yeah, I, yeah, I can I played it. Um, oh, you played it? Yeah. Okay. I've done a video which... I never played it, uh, V, actually. No? So how, how does it... Um, you I have... mean, it feels bad when you sit down, right? No, no, you have to get it um, here between, ah. between the um, legs. In the legs, yes. Yeah. And then it, it works. Okay. And it's a, it's a pretty light guitar. When you come from a Les Paul, yeah. it's like, oops, not That's much. That's a guitar. <laughs> yeah. But um, tone-wise, I'm impressed because it has more air than a Les Paul. Okay. So when you play Les Paul, you usually always strive to get more air. Yeah, yeah. And the Flying V has that by nature. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of... 
and of course 58 with real pf yeah, pickups sure. and that's another thing and uh, that was a great guitar and back to joe bonamassa he also had a flying v yes. or still has yeah. i guess maybe yeah. several um that he played at the royal yes at the royal armored hall he played it and um i think it was the guitar the amos guitar i'm not sure about the the right story but um I guess it was found in a shop and he bought it there and he got it then and was very happy with it and played it, I think, the whole concert maybe. Mm -hmm. And then he fell in love with the Flying V. Uh, but no, not long ago, um, he also used a dozen other guitars, <laughs> like he has. He has a huge collection. <laughs> yeah. I think that so. the, the thing about the Flying V is also um, all about King, I think. Yeah. Also was playing a flying V, so that's one of yeah. uh, Bonamassa's influences. Absolutely, yes. All the three kings. Yeah. BB yeah. King. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, he played with BB King when he was twelve. Yeah. So BB King, they met um, at the concert, and BB was impressed, and yeah. Joe was very happy, of course. Of course. <laughs> I mean, if the, the man of the blues, BB King, says um, you're great and let's play together, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, so there's BB King, there's Albert King, and there's Freddie, Freddie King. King yes. um, how would you describe the difference between the three kings? Mm. Are you familiar with them, all mm, three of them? Yes, I'm a little bit familiar with BB King, of course. Yeah. Um, BB King is very special, I think. Not only his guitar playing, also his whole whole aura, like you say. It's, it's yeah, a yeah. blues man. It's yeah, yeah. BB King's blues, so yeah. that's the thing. The thrill is gone. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, and um, I think Albert King is a little bit more more angry in his playing. Yeah, I guess he, so. He, yeah, he's he's the rockiest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it, uh, of course, that's not really authentic, I, I, but I try to mimic the, the energy behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, did he play only with fingers? I, uh, one of the kings was the finger guy yeah, with... And, yeah, yeah, it's very hard. Yeah. And here, here's one thing, um, amp-wise, they, they mainly played Fender amps. Yeah, okay. And uh, made them extremely loud. Made them extremely yes, loud yes, yes. and used tons of treble. Yeah. And um, well, the 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 richness and to make the tone full was simply volume. Yeah. You know, just drive the thing, uh, the, the amp as hard as it gets, and then have the headroom. So if you want to play expressive, in a way, it helps to get. Headroom, absolutely. Which doesn't mean that you have to be over the top all the time. It's more about. Yeah, you can play very dynamic then. Yeah. Great, you know, so this is the thing about playing dynamic and for me, just for the guys, I'm using this uh, vintage channel here and I just roll down the the gain to whatever five and do the rest yeah, on, yeah, yeah, on, on, totally. on the volume of the I'm guitar. I'm doing the same with the amp 
one always. Yeah. I mean, with hamburgers, about five, six, yeah. and then the rest with the pot. Yeah. That's the best thing. Very easy to yeah. do. And, and if you need something more, you just put in a yeah. cube streamer or whatever. Yeah. yeah. There's tons of options yeah. how to get more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, talking about um, different influences uh, on. Jubona Massa. So there were the three kings. Yes, yeah, the three kings. And then it's Danny Gatton. That's very Danny important Gatton. because he took lessons from, uh, from Danny Gatton. Uh -huh. and, um, so for the guys that don't know yeah. Danny Gatton, he was the oh, Telecaster Jesus, master. He was the master. Unbelievable. Sure. Yeah. You know? And he had also a very bitey tone. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Played and, Telecasters. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, wasn't because we ended as lovers played by him first? Or did yeah. he do a version? Doesn't do Jeff Beck first? Okay. I'm not sure. Maybe but the people know. Let us or know. Or is that very much the style of Danny Getten inspired yeah. Jeff Beck to play that way? Could be, could be. Maybe somebody yeah. knows, put it in the comments. Um, but um, there's something about Cause We Ended as Lovers. Ah, I'm, I know why I think of that. It's because of the volume sweep. Ah, you know? yes, yes, yes. You know? doing that okay telecaster wrong yeah, guitar yeah, yeah, okay. but um okay danny getten um i think danny getten was too good yeah danny getten was extremely good because yeah. he played all the different styles he had yeah. also a lot of jazz influence yeah and a lot of that country stuff yeah. like joe, joe does it all the time yeah he says, Okay, um, then I think there is a lot of influence from Gary Moore as well. Yes, Gary Moore. I mean, there's of course um, Eric Clapton, um, and I saw Drew Bonamassa once opening up for Jeff Beck. Oh, okay. That was actually the day when I met Jeff Beck. Didn't to you told me that that um, he tried? <laughs> The funny thing was then that he tried to play like Jeff back then, back oh, then, yeah, with I, his tremolo bar and... I, I think this, I told this year... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. That's something you shouldn't do. Never. If, if there is, if, <laughs> if there's Jeff Beck on stage, leave Jeff Beck alone. Yeah. Try to be not in his territory. Just don't use the tremolo at all. Yeah. <laughs> and, I think that day, yeah, this, yeah. yeah now I rem I, it, it come, the memory comes but back. I remember back then I saw um, an interview of and he said, um, I shouldn't do this and yes. I will never do it again. <laughs> I've been there and it's like, you know, there's only one number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no matter how try, uh, how close you try yeah. to want to be, it's a wannabe thing. Yeah. And um, I was there. Um, but the good thing is, I met Jeff Beck after the concert. Mm. I saw Joe Bonamassa opening up. I met the guys uh, b backstage and I met Jeff Beck backstage after, uh, was it, I think it was even before the show. Oh, okay. I spent the whole day with, with them, which was interesting. Um, my hero, uh, my biggest hero. Yeah, Jeff Beck. Um, Jeff Beck's <laughs> unbelievable, yeah, to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he, um, okay, that's, not so much an influence. <laughs> of course, he tried. Yeah, he tries. But he tries. Um, I can tell that Joe probably learned a bit more from Gary Moore. Yeah. And uh, he actually did a cover that already has been covered by Gary Moore, which is the Midnight Blues. The Midnight Blues, yes. And originally it's from... Oh, damn. I think one of the Kings. No. No. No, no. It's from Snowy White, isn't that? Snowy Isn't White that? is a great... Could be, could be that this is the original, yeah. but I'm not 100% sure. Um, guess what? Let's try to play the Midnight yeah. Blues. I thing. hope... Okay, oh, let, let's see. 
It's a blues. I have no idea. I never played that thing before, but... Yeah, me neither. We, we try. We try. <laughs> okay, good luck. Um... <laughs>
Hey, cool. Um, That's so fun. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah, um, fun. C minor. C minor, it, yes. You know. I the saddest know. of all keys. I oh, know it's D minor, actually. Yeah, the saddest yeah. of all keys. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. The, the Gary Moore style here. I mean, you know, when Gary turned his career to the blues again, he did a lot of, you know, songs like oh, that. I love that album that uh, Still Got the Blues one. Yeah. When it came out, I was listening to it day and night. It's so great. And there's also, the I think the Midnight Blues is on that record. I'm not 100%. On this or on After Hours, the one comes After Hours, after it. probably, yeah. yeah I, it could be, it could be. Yeah, too sure. long ago, yeah. I forgot about it. I got it upstairs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Here's something. Um, when I put out my first solo records or my... What was this? Oh, last, last episode I talked about 1997. I released the Electric Gallery and my first album came out, I think, 1995, maybe? Yes, great. Uh, whatever. So, I was at school at that time. <laughs> yeah, you were at school. I, I released solo albums. I was touring with Tic Tac Toe. Yeah. And um, um, Joe Bonamassa played small venues for little money yeah so he did the real hard working deal back then and then suddenly he became bigger and bigger and bigger and Absolutely. um i I'm, i find it kind of interesting yeah. what happened there yeah. and um from several aspects one aspect is you know if you play blues clubs um internationally like he did and how do you get into the next level into bigger halls yeah. and then royal albert hall yeah that's pretty interesting how yeah. this way <laughs> yeah so what i noticed is there was kind of a marketing yeah. machine and a personal change also with him yeah yeah sure sure he was about to play more or less ball uh -huh. he was uh, about to wear sweets Suits, yeah. Suits, yeah. yes, not sweets. Uh, su Suits. Su yeah, sweets. <laughs> Suits, he lost candy. some weight. And he was um, ah, okay. like a businessman looking, actually. Mm -hmm. But that kind of, um, yeah. And, okay, I mean, it's on, on the one hand, I admire that because, you know, it's, I mean, you have to, you have to realize it, it is an achievement. To, Absolutely. To, you yes. know, I'm, I've, I was, I'm still stuck in this little um, venues, but on the other hand, I've never done this kind of big thinking how to grow, and I, I'm, I'm more into, you know, blue guitar is a, a good example. I'm not, I have no investors. It's all my company. Yes. It's my money. So there's limitations sure. on budgets. And I think Joe Bonamassa yes, went the other way. Yes, yes, yes. He, he said, okay, I'm fed up with whatever clubs. Let's get 10,000 people. Uh, let's aim there. Yeah. And how to get there? I noticed a few things. Maybe we can learn something from this for our little bands or our little careers. I remember he had uh, YouTube... Um, and especially Facebook friends and Facebook groups and the street teams that kind of yeah, yeah, did yeah. promotion for him. But I also, also think it was about in that time range when he met Kevin Shirley, that's a famous producer. Okay. And I think he got him in the right, or in, the, in this way uh -huh. of achieving something more. Yeah, and you know, that, that another decision Bonamassa took was he wasn't waiting for any record company because he knew the music that he's doing is not massive radio or um, media. Yeah. Um, okay. So why wait for somebody else that probably says, yeah, we do a little bit, but could you do another album with some more hits and stuff like that? And he simplified, I think he simplified um, the music but he also keep the tradition kept also, the, yeah, the tradition, kept the tradition. Yeah. yeah and um 
it's maybe a little bit cliche. I mean, it's kind of trying to, to, to be streamlined in a way, okay? I'm, I'm a bit offensive here, um, but let, let me explain what I mean by that. If, if you want to grow and if you make music that is kind of too extreme or too complicated or That's too arty-farty... Uh, difficult to achieve um, money and people. <laughs> yeah, so a, a lot of people go maybe, oh... I don't know. So by streamlining some aspects, um, you you have the potential to grow bigger. And this, com in combination with the marketing, and on the marketing side, there were tons of collaborations with uh, guitar brands oh, like yes. Gibson and Dunlop, Dunlop and yes. Signature this and Signature that and Picks and Straps. And if you go on his website, <laughs> you find. Anything. A lot of things. Yes, I, anything. I think there's nothing yeah. in this world you couldn't find with the Bonner Massa yeah. logo on it. Uh, okay, that's a that's also one thing to get the logo right, to get yeah. to get it look good, and it's a selling point. Yeah, and and there's there's a lot of cool marketing uh, strategies and phrasing. It's like, you know, keeping the blues alive. It's something yeah. positive. It's something um, he actually did, and. Um, on the other hand, it's it's something we can all agree on because we like the blues and, you know, some of those older, great blues players, they didn't have the audience anymore. Yeah. And Eric Clapton does his Crossroads Festival and offers kind of a big stage um, with his big name. So I think for many people, Joe is a kind of um, mixture of them all, of the great heroes. <laughs> and maybe he, he is like a vehicle... To all these old, I think old or famous guys that were presented at that time, yeah. and he's the the new one. Yeah. But not not to be so innovate innovative, but um, to keep the tradition. Yeah, and that's something I find I'm, I'm, myself. I find it very good because yeah. it's keeping uh, reminds us of or the the, the good younger old ones, music. the good yeah. old music. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, that's. That's the positive aspect yeah, about that's it. That's a positive one. Yeah, and if I were to be uh, a bit controversial or critical on that, I would say some artists developed even more their own style in a way. Yeah. I mean, if I look at Jeff Beck, you know, nobody, nobody is like Jeff Beck, and nobody can sound like him. You can imitate him with this. It, he's so far out yeah, yeah. as his artistry is. On another planet, yeah. in another galaxy, I would yeah. say, I can rave not enough about people like that, but um, um, it's also hard these days to get there. To get an own voice, it's yeah. very hard. Yeah, I mean, I did my thing with my strat. Here's my beloved strat, and on my albums, I think I achieved my own voice in yeah. a way. You did. But I'm, uh, uh, to be honest, it's it's also founded on, you know, my heroes, Richie Blackmore, Gary Moore, and, and uh, Gilmore, and who not. But uh, everyone does it. Yeah. I mean, if you listen to um, Clapton, you also find background. There's yeah. always background. Yeah, sure. sure. Nobody comes from no. Uh, no. For nothing. But um, I think people like um, Clapton had a bigger innovation factor. Absolutely, yes. Because back in the 60s with Cream, this kind of power blues rock he created yeah. was, was unheard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Also with this famous uh, woman tone he yeah. always creates and how he plays. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then, like, you know, people of... Like Gary Moore, you can tell where his influences, but his fire... I can tell Gary Moore in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlos Santana. You just have to look in his face and see the angriness and the power yeah. and the emotions. That's, Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. On the other hand, Joe is now taking care, being big. You know, he yeah. has has the the financial background and he he can support or play with 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 great players like Eric Gales. Yeah, yeah. Eric Gales, Josh Smith. Yeah. And the funny thing is they grew up together. They grew up 
they were the same age and played and now he's he's kind of supporting them and that's a good thing also yeah and like you said with the blues alive yeah 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 so and and that, that's a funny that, that that's my Joe Smith story when I I visited um, Joe Smith um, in Los Angeles and and then he he told me the story that he has to produce some new artist that Joe Bonamassa discovered, which was Paula Joe Taylor, oh. who I actually then dentally made famous. Really? Yeah, ah. because I was filming her when she tried the M1 and the ah, Telecaster. I remember that video. And, the, yes. and this was the Granny Shreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. the whole thing comes back in full circle. <laughs> and in the end, you know, Joe gives the money. Joss does the job, and Paula yes. is is around. <laughs> Crazy word, and it's so it's so unbelievably small, uh, and all in, intertwined, and everything is connected. Unbelievable, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so this this is kind of the business aspect. Yeah. What is behind the scenes? Oh, I have a few other uh, notes that I have here. Ah, for me. There are great people out there that we should mention if you are in this kind of music. Yeah. And there's, for instance, Greg Koch. Yeah, Greg Koch. Oh, I love Greg Koch. He's such a funny guy also. <laughs> huh? Unbelievable yeah. player. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, yes, yes. Unbelievable tall. Yeah, unbelievable tall. You know, when I talk to him, yeah. it's like I talk <laughs> to him like that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He's God, in a way. Yeah. Um, and here in Germany, we have a guy, um, Henrik Freischlader. Oh, yes. um, yeah, and he opened up for Bonamassa ah, a, a few times. Okay. So they know each other okay, quite okay. well. And uh, Henrik is kind of a German version uh, with a darker voice, but even dirtier. Okay. And I would say at least equally as good. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> so if you international guys... Um, don't know Henrik Freischlader. Yeah. This is my advertising for Henrik Freischlader. I remember that one um, at the guitar summit where you guys playing, yeah. and then a string broke, <laughs> and then he took uh, Billy Sheen's bass and played the solo. That was he, so good. He finished Man, the guitar yes. solo on Billy yeah. Sheen's bass. That was so good. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Henrik Henrik is a a very cool guy with a um, a very good right hand. Oh yes. Yeah. So you know. It's the energy is Gary Moore style. Yeah. Um, but he, I mean, he, he really is a he lives the life of a blues man. And uh, if you wouldn't know he's German, you would never think he is German. But he's from the Ruhrgebiet. Yeah, from the Ruhrgebiet. The Ruhrgebiet is <laughs> where, Ruhrgebiet. Where, where the coal miners come from. Yeah. So this is kind of um, our cotton fields in Germany. This mentality is probably with him yeah. somehow. Um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about Joe Bonamassa's ingredients in vocabulary and scales. I mean, of course, it's a lot of pentatonic, yeah, sure, sure. minor, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then um, there is the famous Eric Johnson. Yeah, and that's one thing. Uh, Eric Johnson a huge influence on uh, Joe Bonamassa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's famous five pattern, you mean? <laughs> Are we in, in A? Uh, okay. For the guys uh, to, to understand this, um, usually we do, you know, three. So, the good thing about that pattern is you can have economic picking. Yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, doing this. I'm doing like a pick slant and then doing... Yeah. Um, no echo. Okay, the 
thing is, um, it the five makes it sound faster. Absolutely, and um, it has a different rhythmic feel. That's yeah, that's a funny thing. And um, there's another way how to play it, which. Is kind of a different beast to play with the right hand. <laughs> yeah, I have practiced this myself. Yeah, I'm okay. very proud of this. Yeah. With the accent it actually helps, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. What he's also doing a lot is uh, five. So this is all the fuddle, we the call fuddle, it in, yeah, in, in, in yeah. German. Um, the wanking. <laughs> of course, sometimes we have to wank. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a main thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, it's fun. So this, this is one, when, when he plays fast, yeah. that's usually the thing mixing five, six, yeah. uh, mainly, and, and sometimes... And he's putting in the ninth a lot of times. Yeah. What he's also yeah. doing, but Eric Johnson is doing that too, and I think this that's is kind of his comes. Eric Johnson style licks. But yeah. he always uh, says it um, himself that he that Eric Johnson is a huge influence. Yeah, for sure. Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, um, um, also, but one thing is also important: the chords, because if he's playing, he's not playing so much this. He's playing it more like this. So yeah. he basically uses the A string, plays uh, on the long. With the power chords like you're just uh, muting the third because with distortion sounds. It is kind yeah. of. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Also from Paul, Paul Kossoff from Free. Yeah, Free. Yeah. Exactly. Um, hey, big hugs from Brazil. Um, yeah, oh. we. Uh, by the way, we have um, Kleber Kashima uh, from Brazil as the outro interview, which ah, is nice. Yes. Um, he, he's a very nice guy that I met at the NAM show. Of course, uh, playing M1. Uh, he. Yeah, this is coming up after the Joe Bonamassa part. But right. uh, before we go in there, um, yeah. Is there any other, um, I mean, the band stuff is classic rock and roll and blues, I guess. The, um, we can talk about his huge guitar collection. Yeah, sure. Um, we have a picture of too many guitars. <laughs> Way too many guitars, yeah. actually. Um, and you can see he, he kind of has everything. And he finally turned the whole thing into... Uh, his museum also. Uh, this is his tour rig. Um, when I go on stage, I have a Strat and a spare Strat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. So this is uh, what he has at home. Um, or I, I think it's part what he has at home. So I guess he's um, 
having even more of these guitars. But uh, as you can see, it's everything famous, famous Les Paul, Strats, Teles, Amps, from, you know, Marshalls, Marshalls, Marshalls. Um, Dumbles, Dumbles, Dumbles. Oh, yes, Dumbles, a lot of Dumbles. Yeah. Fender Amps. Yeah. High Power Twins. Um, yeah, that, and I think he has a Fender uh, signature High Power Twin. Yeah, yeah. And his own design speaker, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, even Joe Smith has his own yeah. design speaker by... Eminem speaker, I think. Eminem, yeah. yeah I, yes. I, I, I bought it. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I have it uh, next room. It's kind of nice. Um, a little bit too bright for what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, he's a hell of a player also. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, this is... Yeah. Josh, Josh is something very special. Yeah, also. It, yes. it's it's an, it's another another um, yeah. style, but Joe Bonamassa used a lot his Marshall Silver Jubilees. Yeah, it is. And as you see in the back, as well. which is yeah. this nice yeah. thing stand here. up so the people can yeah. maybe okay. maybe see this. This one. is a um, Silver Jubilee. Um, the model number is twenty five fifty five, and. Of course, we can go and have a go on this amp. Wait a minute. I switch it on four. Yeah, that's one. And we search the internet for Joe's favorite settings. So what we have is maybe you can see. Yeah, it's uh, presence, the presence five, five base, base all the way up. It's uh, the middle is about seven point five. The treble is about five. Master output five, lead master ten, and gain input five. five. Yes. So, and this is how it sounds. Yeah, it's a nice sound, very mid rangey, but hey. This is the tone, and this is... As you can see, we can get pretty close, and I show you my settings here. Um, gain was uh, actually somewhere, I think, <laughs> seven and a half, uh, between seven and eight. Then uh, the bass is on two, the mids are full, and the treble is on four. Uh, but uh, using the vintage channel. And you use the low gain mode, I think. Ah, yeah, yeah. right. Um, exactly. Uh, low gain mode, for the guys who don't know how to get to the low gain mode, if you have a Mercury Edition, switch the amp off, press and hold the boost button, hold it down while you power on the amp, and then the, um, the boost button blinks three times. I can do it. So you see, press and hold the boost, and switch on. Now, <coughs> It's normal mode, it has a bit more. A bit more gain. So I switch off, press and hold the boost button, <coughs> and now it blinks three times, which tells me now I'm in the low gain mode. Awesome. Yeah. still use the boost um, because I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I'm, I leave the boost all the time on when I'm playing the amp one. Ah. Really, all the time. Yeah, I mean, what is the boost? And it's use another booster in front. That's a great, but, but using just a tiny bit of gain. That's what I have done for ages. If you look on my pedal board, yeah. it is all filled with kind of boosters and I'm not using gain from them. It's not no, about it's, gain. No, no. It's just a touch yeah. of extra source. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, yeah, what you can get uh, from the, from this boost or from... Ah, you brought your Steel Singer. Yeah, I bought singer. the Steel Singer. It's a pedal from Nux, Nux, I don't know how to spell. UX. It's, yeah, and UX. Ah. And it's a kind of a dumblish kind of tone. Actually, it's from... A clone from the from which Vertex. Vertex, yes. Vertex. I have one yeah. somewhere. And it sounds really nice actually. Has that nice uh, dumblish uh, mid range. To it. Mid range, yes. So the, the dumble mid range to me is uh, around 500 hertz. It's a little lower than on a tube screamer. This, the yeah, tube yeah, screamer yeah. has more the ah, 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 yeah. and the dumble has more oh, more yeah, throaty. Yeah, yeah. More throaty. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, this is a Marshall. Ah, this course. is Marshall, yes. We switch it off That's because... That's why I sold my Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. this is... So it adds a lot more boom to it. Like yeah, you yeah. said, like mid, mid hum. A low mid hum. Yeah, low mid hum. Um, I it also sounds awesome. I'm using this with the clean channel, the clean channel full up, and then this pedal in front sounds really nice. Different color, but gets more in this kind of dumblish yeah. character. Yeah, the, the clean channel takes pedals also very oh, yes. well, so yeah. that's important. I show you another pedal that I have in my collection, which is... Uh, but by the way, this costs how much? Oh, it's about uh, 35, 39, <laughs> so this is... The cheapest. Actually, you have to buy it right now because I get a lot of percentage. No, I, I don't get anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking here. Well, it doesn't have your signature on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Fabian Ratzak yes. signature <laughs> model. Uh, now, where is it? So? I built it all by myself. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just give me $500 and. <laughs> okay, I, I found a pedal which is called the Fat Drive from, from um, Pictronics. David Coltai, American guy who makes many things and pedals. Uh, and this makes a lot of. Oh, it's okay. Oh, okay. Um, as you can see, pedals get old yeah. and rusty. <laughs> Staying for days, and the other pedal that I found in my collection the other day. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, can you hold it for a second? I get this out of the way. And I, I heard they are it's sought open. after by now and also expensive. But you know, the good thing is, I was a pedal nerd even before, you know. Everybody was into pedals. This was, I think, back in the 90s. And this is the Brown Source by Love Tone. Love Not Love Pedal, but Love Tone. Okay, made in England. And hey, look at the design. Floop. Yeah. And here is <laughs> great. the um, compartment for the battery. You simply can flip it on and off. And this is... Okay, okay. Now. plug it in. Ah, sorry, wrong call. 
So this is supposed to be a bipod. Fuzzy character to it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. great pedal. Yeah, I rediscovered it just today. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. How so much is that? I, I have no idea. I, okay. I, the other day, I, I think somebody wrote about these pedals are expensive. Oh. Anyone? Okay. Anyone knows that uh, about this brown sauce pedal? It's it's here. <laughs> um, yeah. So pedals. Maybe back to Joe Bonamassa, um, one more thing, um, Les Paul, he plays Strat sometimes, yeah. but I think he's mainly... <clears throat> but he started actually with a, uh, with a Stratocaster, and there's a funny story I heard just recently um, on YouTube, and that's where um, his father bought um, a candy apparatus Strat for him, but he said, don't tell your mother, <laughs> you don't... You don't Tell your mother, please. So, and he hided it under the bedside of his mother's bed. Okay. And she was at work around, I don't know, one to four maybe. Yeah. Until that time, Joe got his guitar in practice and then he was hiding it again. Oh. But after a few months, um, of course, <laughs> yeah, they, told, they told yeah. the mother and everything was, was fine. But that, that was kind of a funny story I heard. <laughs> cool. And then he uh, scratched off all the, the nice candy apple red with the capo because you want to make it look uh, used. <laughs> well, we all do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we have to learn. We have, yeah, to, we have learn. to learn. Yeah. yeah, we start somewhere. Yeah. And um, isn't he from a, a music yeah. center yeah. background? His, his, his father, his father had um, a music store. different, different um, music stores, yes. He yeah. started with one and then after a while he got another one. Yeah, and yeah. this is why he's addicted at buying old yeah, I think, guitars. Yeah, I think it's in the family maybe. Yeah, it runs in the family. <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm reading the comments right now. Um, somebody says that uh, Joe is visiting Norman Rare Guitars kind of on a daily basis. Oh, yes. Norman Norm Rare Guitars. Yes, yeah, yes. In, in the valley. I've yeah. been there too. And uh, yeah, they have a lot of good guitars. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> good expensive guitars. Yeah, for people with money. More yeah. money than I do have. And um, talking about his gear... There's a pedal board. We should show uh, the picture of his pedal board yeah. because we talked pedals. And on the pedals, pedal board, we can see a fuzz, which is of oh, course... Oh, someone wrote a brown source now about 700 euros. Aha, see? Okay, uh, I, yeah. Mr. Stratocaster. Whoa, what, what a great name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he has, uh, you know, a lot of things and... What is it? Oh, uh, one in particular. <laughs> yeah, well, which is the Jusen Kettner Reflex, which I invented um, back in the days when I talked Jusen Kettner into making tube pedals. And there was a series of the so-called tube tools. One of them was the Rotosphere, which is a Leslie simulator. Mm -hmm. A bit noisy, but killer authentic. That's why Jeff Beck's using it. Billy Gibbons is using it, Bonamassa is using yeah. it, Aerosmith, the guys are using it. It's the secret weapons of the pros. Yeah, absolutely. And um, he's also using a DD2C. 
Well, yeah, similar taste. Yeah. And why? Because uh, I heard that uh, David Gilmour was using one. Yeah. So, you know, we all copy other people. <laughs> sure. Um, and there's Tube Screamer on the board and uh, MXR, whatever. Is this the... the this is I, I think that's the, the, the simple boost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, no, maybe. I think it's a carbon copy delay, maybe. Ah, it's a carbon copy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a carbon copy. Uh, maybe the Could carbon, carbon copy? Uh, no, it's something different. Ah, I think it's a flanger because I heard ah. a secret weapon Joe uses all the time is um, he's using always a kind of chorus or flanger in the background to um, tighten up the bass. Ah. That's a little trick. Okay, talking about tricks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we all have our tricks, way huge. Um, yeah, so if you do have, um, I think he played a lot of different yeah. amps in the past and in the studio. And there and are old videos where he is demonstrating yeah. his whole pedal train, like you yeah, yeah. can't imagine how big it was, and showing all the effects and sounds. and. To, yeah, too, too many options. Until there was a time when he says, we don't need any panels, I just have this overdrive pedal and that's all, you don't need anything else. <laughs> and the whole world was against Joe's statement then. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> because pedal, pedals um, are not your, your tone. <laughs> MXR microflanger, ah, Stratocaster. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, Mr. Stratocaster, you are the expert. You, yeah. you are the winner tonight. <laughs> yes. You are the winner tonight. You know what? We have another song. Oh, um, was, which one was it? Um, I think The Ballad of John Henry. And you know what? Come on, we, we simply have to yeah. play. Because, you know, when Fabian is here, we have, we have somebody that plays fantastic. Uh -huh. and Come on, no, no, you no, play no. fantastic. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is like, it's, it's fun. And I'm never afraid that anything if we fuck it up, it's beautiful. So let's go ahead. <laughs> so let's fuck it up. <laughs> let's fuck it up. Here we go. And, uh, this could be the starting point. Uh, no sound. Ah. Oh. Oh.
Okay, <clears throat> a special um, jam. Yeah. Let's call it a jam. Let's call it the jam. So, do we have a few questions here? Um, H and K, what is it? Is more about making that tone? Is that but true? Uh, what is R talking about, Jason Kettner? Thomas, any thoughts about the new Stompman? Danke. Um, well, the Stompman is Bernd Schneider's... Um, um, answer uh, to a cheap version of M1, but not. <laughs> but not. <laughs> but not. Anyway, um, yeah. But it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's not as what we have here. Um, um, somebody says the speaker caps are great. I tell you a story about the using Kettner cabinets. There oh, are yeah. certain cabinets that are outstanding. Really? Especially the custom shop. I don't know what the, the, the model was called. In the Triumph days, we had, uh, when I was with using Kettner, we had the expensive cabinets with green bags. Mm. And these were kind of the last. Ah, the old uh, ones. Old ones Ooh, okay. from the UK. Killer speakers. So that, that's a, a, a definitely a HK cabinet that was killer. And, the, uh, and also the vintage 30s from these expensive cabinets, custom, I don't know what the name was, CC, blah, blah, blah. These were, I liked them very much. Um, okay, what, um, oops, forgot about the live stream here now. All good. Oh, so somebody <laughs> uh, checking the... Um, Okay, the keyboard player of Joe is insane, of course, yeah. great musician. Also, the, the bass player, are they all great? Uh, great okay, musicians. you should be louder, somebody okay. says. Oh, but uh, here it's freaking loud. Guys. Yeah, we, it's really freaking loud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, he actually, Fabian said, I want to turn down a yeah. bit. Uh, but yeah, yeah. so <laughs> we, we always do something yeah. wrong. But anyway, I think. Um, if you don't have any more questions at this point, um, we can actually move on to the second topic um, for tonight, uh, which is Klepa Kashima. But before we go there, I have really to thank you. I thank you, Thomas. Um, it was a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and we actually kind of jammed three songs. Yeah. That's more than usual. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's... I'm sure there's more to come in the future because um, yeah. Fabian is very active. If you don't know him, check out um, his YouTube video videos. Yeah, my YouTube. 
and yeah. he's he's a killer teacher and uh, i mean you have the detail for all you know the licks of the stars um and the heroes um You, I don't know how much time you spend, but it seems like you spend some time in yes, decoding the it. secrets. Yes, yes, I love it. It's like a, it's like a passion, actually. Yeah. Like a drug. You have to find out how the hell do they get the sound and the tone and the fingers yeah. and how the techniques they're using. Ingwie, you know. Yeah, uh, Ingwie is doing his stuff. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff. And which is great. I mean, it's... Uh, um, yeah, I'm currently too busy with designing M's and yeah, stuff like that. You're so good, man. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I didn't have the time to practice yeah, over sure. the last years. I'm missing playing live as well because usually my routine is coming back when I gig and I still love to gig. Mm. They are coming, um, gigs are coming back and I have a gig with, where is it? Alex Bayroth. Ah, Alex Bayroth's guitar is oh, today in the, in the other corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, he gave me a call To th this morning so that's cool. a good thing about the scene we all are connected i recommended a female singer that i played with um, sabrina who was on my dvd and he he can you know we share singers we share pedals we sure it's yeah, community community <laughs> that's that's great so and fabian again is uh, also part of our community and please check out his videos that he does um, on YouTube. Thanks, yeah, um, yeah. Check them out, yeah. check out my channel, subscribe. Yeah. Also to, to this channel, uh, of always course. Subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe, yeah. subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, <laughs> we, need, we need more um, subscriptions. Uh, anyway, that's, this is so important. Um, well, we have a, la a very last question. Can yeah. you please tell us something about your guitar? Yeah, sure. Basically, this is a Menzinger Les Paul. Menzinger is a, a Polish kind of uh, brand. Get, get the clip, the yeah. clip on tuner off, ah, yeah, so we off, have yes. to be honest with so, the name. Yes, it's Menzinger. Menzinger custom yes, guitars. Yes, they made in Poland, I think, and it's um, it's a little less thick as yeah, mine. yeah. It's not, and it's also as you listen, it's a yeah. little bit chambered. Yeah, and um, it had a custom cryo 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 treatment. Cryo, cryo treatment and. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, on this guitar, it really opens it up a lot. There are Klopman pickups. Of Klopman course. Klopman pickups are the best <laughs> ones, for sure. This is a 58. This yeah. is a 57. Yeah. We got good ports, good CTS ports. That's a huge, huge part. Of the sound. Yeah. 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 If, if you play less ports, yeah. the, the ports are so important. 50s wiring, of yeah, course. Yeah, 50s wiring yeah. and the value of the ports. And the capacitors. I mean, this is why people important. Yes. Uh, uh, rave about bumblebees, but they're similar capacitors. If you have the wrong capacitors, the wrong wiring, yeah. no sounds, matter how yeah. good yeah. The, the wood sounds and the guitar yeah. is, nothing comes through. And it's like some people say, oh, I don't use this, so, but it, the, no. it goes always through the capacitor. Yes. That's the thing, always. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And therefore, it is crucial to have yeah. good electronics yeah. in your And of course, guitar. good hardware. You need good hardware. This is yeah. ABM bridge yeah. and it's also good parts to make good mechanical parts. Yeah. For you know a stable yeah. uh, tone. Yes. Yeah. Okay, doc. Um, any update on the blue box availability? No, blue box is a big big problem for us this, these days. You know, supply chains and chips and stuff. Actually, I'm not sure if we can get the blue box back to life. We, we tried hard to find chips. I can't tell you anything uh, about that. So if you have a blue box, you can be happy because they are, <laughs> I'm using it every time on my pedal board. Um, try to get one used. Uh, this is all I can recommend at this point. Um, Häusel or Kloppmann? Kloppmann. Pick? Kloppmann. Okay, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Fast answer. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like um, to introduce Kleber Kashima um, from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And he is first also another great guitar player, a nice guy we met. And yeah, he will give you a little bit more insights in his life in Brazil playing, having a music school, oh, being in, 
in his bands. He's kind of a guy that knows how to 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 survive in this business in a professional it's a tough way. Business, yes. Yeah, and uh, he found his, his way, and it's it's very interesting to um, to watch his interview, um, which I have done with him. Um, and he will also explain his M1 pedal board right. and all the pedals he's using and what, uh, yeah, uh, what he likes. He's using the Mercury, right? Yeah, he's yeah, using the right. Mercury. I think he also has an Iridium, but yeah. he's more the Mercury guy like okay, yeah. us, yeah. probably. Totally. Do you have an yeah. Iridium? Yes, but I'm <laughs> Mercury all the way. Yeah. <laughs> all the way. It, it, it's funny. Some people are Iridium guys and some yeah. people are Mercury guys. The other day I had somebody with a Mercury who wasn't happy. And when I uh, showed him the Iridium, uh, he brought his angle amp. He, he liked a bit better than the Mercury. And then when he played the Iridium and we put it here in the switching system, and then we came back and he said, I think my angle is broken. <laughs> so he liked the Iridium that's so much great, better. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the reason why we have two different versions because yeah. they are good for certain reasons. And by the way, yeah. Andreas Kloppmann, he likes the Iridium. Which really? Yes. He, oh. Okay, really? You know, yeah, surprise. <laughs> okay, he, he's, surprise. He's yes. a, a Iridium fan, okay. but playing classic tones with it. Yeah. Who cares? It's all good. Check out um, um, Kleber Kashima now and see you guys next week. Ah, next week is coming. It's a very Fender-esque episode. Ooh. I'll have all my Fender amps back in shape and I have a special guest, Mick Woll. We talk about pedal platform amps mm. and um, we start with Fender and then I'll have Marshall and Vox so this will be a, a series nice. of um, traditional amps pedal combinations and yeah next week will be Fender and I think you've never seen my whole collection <laughs> stay tuned for that one and now Kleber Kashima cheers cheers <laughs> Hello, this is a very warm welcome to Kleber Kashima from Sao Paulo in Brazil. One of, well, the most professional guitar players I've ever met because he is not only a solo artist, he has his own band, Hot Rocks. He also uh, has his, I think, own music school. And we met at NAMM show once and of course, I can see he's using also the M1. So, Kleber, what is, um, let, let us know a little bit more about your background. What is the band you are playing with? I can see many of the videos um, of that band, Hot Rocks, and you have kind of a venue that you play more often. Yeah. Well, um, first of all, thank you for the, the inviting. It's for me. It's an honor for me, and uh, I always uh, watch the Academy of Tone, <laughs> and I'm very glad. And uh, you are very famous in in Brazil, in São Paulo. <laughs> you have many many fans <laughs> here. Thank you. And, mm -hmm, I started playing when I was uh, a very child, and uh, now I have a band called Hot Rocks, and I play every weekend uh, in Sao Paulo, which is the biggest uh, city of Brazil. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm a professional musician. I have three instrumental albums released. Uh, the, last, the last album uh, was released in vinyl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me cool. show you. Ah, yeah. Uh, in vinyl and... Oh, yeah, a real clear vinyl. Yeah, it's translu yeah. translucent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very yeah. nice. Was released was released uh, by Edifier Records, mm -hmm. okay? And it's printed in the USA. Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I play in Sao Paulo, uh, uh, and sometimes I play with my solo albums with theaters and sure. some workshops and 
that's it. São Paulo yeah. is very uh, there. There are very places to play. Very club. Uh, there are uh, many clubs. Yeah. And, uh, pubs. Yeah, yeah. Clubs. What What I see is you. You have almost. You have a regular gig. You are playing at least a couple of times in a month. So you are really doing the stage work. And yes, yeah, it's about eight, eight and ten gigs per week. can play kind of any style of music from rock music to pop music uh, I, yeah. I, have, I, I've, I checked you out of course uh, and I heard uh, Michael Jackson I heard so many different styles of music yes. also Rush you know Rush. Uh, we love Rush <laughs> yeah and um, yeah that that's great so um, You have um, when when you come okay. There's you in the band, and then you also have your institute where you kind of are a teacher. Is this your school, or is this yes. somebody else's school, or what's the thing about the, the music school? Okay, no, it, it's my my school. Uh, it's called uh, Instituto Musical IMKS, and have two branches. Mm -hmm. okay. And I started teaching uh, about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Just just a moment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Many people call started... you. <laughs> Busy <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. And I started teaching about 20 years ago, maybe. I now, now I am 47 years old. And I started teaching uh, with maybe... 18 years old, oh. 18 years, 20, yeah. You know? It's almost 30 years. Okay. Teaching. And yes, my life is uh, only for the the institutes yeah. and to play live <laughs> in yeah. the weekend. Uh, I can see when you when you teach at the institute. I guess you have several levels. You have like entry level, and you have more professional level. Yes, yes. So, and, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. I teach of uh, any styles and any levels. Okay. Okay. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, for beginning and advanced levels. Yes. Uh, for me, it's no problem. Okay. Uh, start to teaching somebody who uh, starting of the zero. Okay? Yes. Yeah. No, no problem. Uh, for me. I I was also a little bit teacher, but more privately, you know, and yeah. then I have released a few teaching like DVDs and stuff, and I'm actually working on a new course. Uh -huh. um, my foundation is I'm self-taught. I'm a very bad uh -huh. reader, very bad. I can uh -huh. read, but very bad. Uh -huh. How about, can you read music? Yes, yes, because uh, I... Play by ear, by ear, the, from maybe eight eight years old when yeah. I start to play very little, and maybe uh, when I when I was sixteen uh, or seventeen years old, I start to to read. I learned theory, musical theory, harmony, improvisation, mm -hmm. and I also. Uh, got uh, interest in learning classical acoustic guitar. Oh, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. uh, then I decided to apply for a universe, university to major in music. Wow. And then okay. uh, I studied uh, in jazz improvisation mm -hmm. and I majored into uh, in a music university. Cool. So, hey, the full spectrum, you know, from yeah. classical guitar, electric guitar, uh -huh. trying to listen. And I think what is the most important things that you always try to teach people? Is there something like, please, guys, listen to what you play? Or is there any one of your top two things you always tell your your students what what is your your main things you have to tell them <laughs> uh, it's difficult to tell because it's a very personal thing um, each student uh, has a personality a taste and i try to uh, personal, uh, personalize personalize yes yeah. uh, the course and and but i have i wrote a, a method i have a met methodology okay uh but uh in the beginning i like to uh i like to uh teach the style the the student like connection like, for him yeah so the, for the, the student gets uh -huh. what he wants I think yes yes if the first, no... because of the, the motivation okay and and then i will start to uh, show some uh, musicians that i like mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. and start to uh put my influences yeah and then the you know uh -huh. get get people somewhere yeah 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 but for me was the same thing you know if there if there's no fun and no motivation you stop yes. and and music and playing music is about passion it's about passion, emotion yeah. so it Ooh. needs to be positive and i i believe in the positive energy if you have the chance to have a positive energy feedback with what yes. you are doing especially totally. when when you practice or when you when you play this mm -hmm. is, is kind of a, a motor that brings you almost everywhere. Uh -huh. This is what, uh, what, I, I, what I learned when I, I, I taught myself that way, you know? Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, it's important to study, study reading, music, theory, theory. But uh, the most important thing for me mm -hmm. is the, the motivation, the passion. Yeah make the, the student uh, inspired. Sure. Uh, wants to play alive, play with other people, uh, so on. Yeah. Hey, um, what about the M1? I mean, how did you get to the, to know about M1? M1 is from Germany. M1 is, is, uh -huh. <laughs> it, it, it is a weird thing. It's, it is something here. You can plug in, but how, how do you use that? How how yeah. how how did you know or, or hear of blue guitar and M1? It's very interesting uh, story because uh, I worked in all guitar magazines that publish in Brazil. Ah, okay? Okay. Uh, yes, for example, Cover Guitar, Guitar Player Brazil, uh, Guitar Class, Guitar Load, and the Brazilian version of Total Guitar Brazil from okay. England. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, making lessons transcriptions and reviews and the last one i worked it was uh total guitar brazil and i have to translate one review of the Eng english english article magazine about, yes yeah. yeah about uh there's a english art article about blue guitar mm -hmm. i don't remember but uh i guess it was the silver edition yeah yeah sure yeah, yeah. Uh, the, one. the review the review was fantastic and mm -hmm. i was curious about the piece of gear, <laughs> yeah. stop head, same watt, uh, yeah. 100 watts. Yeah. And some years later, uh, GSB Pro Audio, yeah. uh, okay. the dealer, mm -hmm. yes, the dealer which I collaborate since uh, the beginning of the company, start to import Blue Guitar. Mm -hmm. And I then I could test and since then I never, I never stopped using <laughs> Blue Guitar. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. For um, me, for me, is the final solution. Wow. About all my yeah my, my troubles. In, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and you have played many amps in your life, I guess. Yes. And, yes. Uh -huh. You sound like somebody that played Fender, Marshall, everything on the market. Yes. Yes. I. I. All. All kind of uh, from digital to all to be amps yeah mm -hmm. for me the the blue guitar it's perfect uh it's the best of both both words yeah best of both both words uh between the all to be amps and digital amps because um uh, it has the practicality of digital amps the small size the wave and filters mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and has the quality of Classic to be amps. Yeah. Um, beside of it, uh, it's being a plug and play. It's very easy to use mm -hmm. on stage. Uh, yeah. For me, it's. Uh, I never had a bad bad tone here. <laughs> yeah, I can check out when you post some videos on Instagram. You know, with your band Hot Rocks, uh -huh. I can hear when you play the amp one, and some of the sounds are killer because you are a man of just playing right and having the ears to create great tones. So what, uh -huh. what I can see, uh, the pedals that you are using in combination with the M1, you know uh -huh. what you want and you know how to make them sound right. Yeah. So what, what, what is on your pedal board? I mean, it's a, a big pedal board, it's a very professional uh -huh. pedal board, but I think it's will, also, yeah. Yes, I will show you. I, I will change the, the camera, okay? Okay, yes, please. And change it first. Let uh -huh. me show you. Okay. Ah. Okay. Uh, the first pedal it's a uh, Cry Baby John Petrucci. Yes. Mature. Yeah. It's very radical. I love the. Yeah. The filter yeah. is aggressive. It's it's kind of. Yes. Meow, yes. Meow, meow. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this one is the Schaefer replica. Solid yeah. Dallas. Yeah, the ACDC boost kind of thing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Based on the circuit of uh, the Vegas yeah. University, uh, the, the wireless. Yeah, I'm a thing. big fan of that as well, yes. <laughs> uh, in Schaefer. Yeah. And this this one is a Brazilian brand called Tony Inc. It's okay. like a, a TS like to be screamer. Green, yes, or, of course. Mm hmm. This is the best chorus. Way huge. Way huge from uh, George Trips. Yeah. Lipo. Yeah. This is the the Timmy. Timmy. Yeah, the, uh -huh. uh, the, the you know the, the small version. Yeah, yeah, the small version. Yeah. Yeah. This is the clone of King of Tone. Uh huh. Brazilian Brazilian brand. Okay. Even tied Rose Delay. Okay, and this this delay is is digital delay with all the different uh, sounds, right? No, yeah, this is the analog delay with budget ah. uh, budget brigade. Ah, this is the okay a, a budget um, bucket bridge delay. Bucket yeah. brigade. Yeah, yeah. Bucket cool. Brigade. It's very cool sound. Mm -hmm. This is the the power power supply. Right, power supply. Yeah. And this is the boost. The yeah. uh, volume use, volume use. Yes. Boost. Yeah. And this is all in front of the amp, or where do you yes. place the, the pedals? Okay. This mm -hmm. is the uh, the front of the amp. Yeah. Only uh, the delay and yeah. boost is in the it's state return. Loop. Okay. So I use in the serial in series. Yes. And that's uh, I use. I like to use the Amp one in preset mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clean. I use the the first button to the clean tone with yeah. reverb. Yeah. Then the second button, the classic tone. Yeah. With reverb too. Yeah. The third bot button. Modern. The modern. Yeah. With no reverb. Ah yeah. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, of course, the MXR micro amp is your second master volume, then. Yes, for solos. Yeah. So. And uh, the there's a button. Uh, which it's about uh, 10 dBs, 4 dBs. Yes. Yeah. 
I engage the button. Okay, yeah, yeah. This gives you more headroom. Yes. Um, for for the for the guys that don't know, on the M1 on the button there is this little um, hole here, and we have uh, a minus ten plus four dB switch to set yes. the effects level. Yeah, reduce uh, send and return at the same time, and it gives more headroom for your pedal boost. And then yes, I always it, use. Uh, yes, I always using uh, plus four dB. Yes, sure. Because if you increase the volume, if if it's on minus ten, it will overdrive the nanotube, which is after the return of the effects uh -huh. loop. Um, you can do that thing, but it's 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 changing the sound. So this is something not recommended. Only special application. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I'm I'm very impressed. Can you can you show us like your clean tone and whatever your 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 major sounds on the pedal belt? Oh sure. And uh, I always use the Schaefer rap replica on. Yeah. For the. Nice, yeah. Let me show you uh, the clean tone with the chimney. Yeah, okay? sure. Yeah, hot clean tone. Yeah, very cool. This is the Tony Creamer. Yeah. The, the screaming like. Yeah. So this is only now the tones you had with the clean channel. Yes, and there's there one more. Yeah. The... Like Good old Eric, Eric Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. It's more uh, darkest sound. I have difficulty sometimes to hit to find the notes as well, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. And then it's, you. Uh, everything is in uh, the clean sound. Okay? Yeah. And then no. what is on on the uh, the is it the classic channel that your second 
Amp one. Yes. Let me show you. This is the, the classic channel with the Schaefer replica. Yeah. Now I turn off. Okay. Turn off to, to compare. Yes, please. I have that that similar pedal. Ah, the storm. From, yeah, from Solo Dallas. And yes, this is the newer newer version. Yeah, it's the small one. And um, the thing about these pedals, they make the sound richer, and they kind yes. of focus on the sweet spot. I like it yes. also a lot. So, um, and yeah, it makes some creaminess, and it's it's good good goodness it's simply goodness uh -huh. it's it's more 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 good guitar <laughs> and don't affect the the, the tone no no yes, yeah it Le leaves the natural character of the guitar natural hey. character, yes what by the way you have a strat from the 70s what what year is it uh-huh uh, 74 74 Fender yeah yeah uh other body like yeah other body and the only modification is the Seymour Duncan vintage rails. Okay. The bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, all stock. Yeah. Nice guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Looks. I can tell where you play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then you have the modern channel, right? Yes. The modern channel. <laughs> very cool make uh -huh. makes makes a lot of sense and uh, when you use the the, the Schiffer, um where is the gain on the amp one where did you put the the gain control is it all the way up or is it seven no no uh, the gain uh, about six or uh, five or six ah yeah okay because then you have more clarity and you have a yes. bit more punch from the pedal yeah from the pedal yes I totally get it. Yes. Uh -huh. Nice. For me, it's perfect in any situation, live situations. Yeah. And um, for recording, it's perfect. Yeah. When you play, I could find a few licks that I kind of also have the same concepts, like. Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. you have patterns that yes. re that repeat. But, uh, you know, and stuff like that, it's kind of, a, and also you have um, some runs, which I have similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like to use the chromatic. Key. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm. Um, you know, and uh, and major third, minor third. You know. Yeah. yeah. You know, it yeah. it all works. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Great. 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 Great to see. Um, so, talking about you as the solo artist, you have released three albums, right? Three albums. Yes. Yeah. And all instrumental, all instrumental music. Yes. And um, we will put the links. Um, in the description here oh, of the okay. live stream, so everybody wants to check that out. But I uh -huh. think you also uh, have a little backing track. I heard yes. some of the stuff is unbelievable, and I heard um, a live cover of uh, Miles Davis things you've done. Brilliant. Yes, yes, yeah. sure. Very, I mean. very, very great stuff. Uh -huh. uh, could you play us one of your yes, tunes? Yes. And I will change the, the guitar. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I will show you my other favorite is the uh, Les Paul made in Brazil. Uh -huh. The brand is uh, Music Maker. Music Maker, yeah. Music Maker, it's from Brazil. And it seems like uh, it's like a classical Les Paul. 19s, yeah. Les Paul. From 59 as well. 59 style. But by the way, I have um, friends of mine, David Reedman, who, who toured Brazil. I have to come to Brazil one day because yeah. I heard so many people seem to love music over there and they go crazy, yeah, especially yeah. also on rock, you know? Just, uh -huh. So. Yes. And, uh, you like the. Uh, you need to play in, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> There's a many, many, many clubs and pubs too. We we make, work on that. Make. We work we work on that because I want to yeah. see that country too. You know, I um, I have been to North America. I have been to Australia. I have been to everywhere, but not, you know, Brazil. Yeah. It's on my wish so, list. The the city that I live in, São Paulo, it's the the biggest city city yeah. of the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I will play one song from my second album. It's called okay. Sunrise. Okay. Okay. Yes, please.
Very cool, super. <clears throat> yeah, I can hear some some of that little Brazilian, maybe Latin kind of things with a um, what, what could that be? The uh -huh. you know with a chromatic uh, uh, lines, yes, yes uh, which is uh -huh. this is cool. And you have a great drummer. I can tell the drummer was cool. Well, whoever that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Nice, very nice. <laughs> um, so you have a Mercury edition um, that you have yes. on your pedal board. Yeah. Yes, ha but I have the, the edition too. Okay. So how would you describe for other people what is the difference? I have this question all the time. People ask me, uh -huh, what, yeah. why Mercury, why Iridium? What, what, uh, what, which one shall I buy? And I have yeah, plug in, you play and you decide. But what is, how would you describe the difference? I really like the, both of them. Uh, anyway, for my own taste, uh, the Mercury edition is perfect for me. Okay. Uh, I love the clean channel uh, for use, uh, for using with my pedals. Yeah. And... Uh, the clean channel uh, is fat and round, and, uh, like fender amps. Yeah. And the drive is perfect for uh, hard rock and mm -hmm. 80s metal. Yes. Like uh, GCM mm -hmm. 800. And I love the modern channel too for mm -hmm. uh, getting high, uh, high end tones. Uh, but I. Uh, the classic channel it's uh that i use of all time it's 90 percent it's your channel this one yeah yeah my favorite channel mm -hmm. uh, but uh i also i also like the region and i have played in live situations several times too but for me for my own taste the mercury edition uh it's it's, it's the right one yeah all situations yeah and i think the the clean the clean channel of the region is more like uh maybe a marshall marshall clean channel for me but it is uh, the mercury it's more fainter yes 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 uh -huh. yeah so that i prefer I, yeah uh mercury is definitely fender i try to have a what I b believe is the mixture of all my Fender amps in my collection, you know, my Princeton, uh -huh. my Super Reverb, my Bassman, everything this Fender collection of mine is in the clean channel of um, the Mercury edition. Uh -huh. Iridium is something different. I will have a guest who is the total fan of Iridium and playing Fusion. Okay. But also, it's nice. You have to check uh -huh. this guy out when he comes because I was impressed what he could do with Iridium uh -huh. for different music. But hey, every guitar player has its own taste, recipe, taste. combination yeah. with guitar. And so there's uh -huh. options, yeah. The classic, classic channel of Iridium, uh, yeah. I think it, it is killer, killer tone. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. It's yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Very. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, you know having having your insights on on the stuff here, and for mm -hmm. having insights into your life. Uh, you know, being uh, somebody that I think is, if you wanted to survive making music today, you have to be flexible. You have to have. Yeah. Uh, different kind of things you can play live but you also it's good to have like a second thing like your music school connected yes. to it so this keeps your life in balance if uh -huh. if you're only a live touring musician uh, with covid for instance 
it's not possible anymore. Yeah, it's complicated. Complicated. Many musicians uh, who live only the live gigs. It's yeah. terrible. I know. So I, I think it's it's you are somebody that understands how to survive and make a living with music in modern times. I mean, I can see how you treat Instagram and Facebook and whatever in a way yes. it makes it makes it work. So for me, you mm -hmm. are the example of somebody professional. I can learn uh, from you. That's <laughs> the honor. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, you deserve it. There's no honor. It's just because it's it's the truth. You 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 are doing it the right way, and everybody can see it. There's no um, mm -hmm. talking about. You should check out Kleber Kashima's website. The link we put all that stuff here in the video, so you can check out all your music, the, the school, and the online course. You have a course um, for learning mm -hmm. and all that uh, stuff. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So, Kleber, it's been uh, for me. It's been an honor to have you. We, I hope we will meet again. We'll meet again at NAM. Um, yes, yes, I will be there. Yeah. To check the 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 MPX. <laughs> sure, and I'm there. I'm yeah. I'm there too. So it won't uh -huh. take long, and we meet in person, and we have a nice drink and spend some time. Thank okay. you so much for being with us. Okay. Thank Cheers. you, Thomas. Thank you very much.